Tom Sizemore, talented actor. He had a bad reputation as a Hollywood party boy with an expensive drug habit. In the late 90s, at the urging of Robert De Niro, Sizemore got clean. Many attribute the decline in his career to this fact. Tom is now on a par with Michael Madsen and Eric Roberts. These guys are competing to be in more movies in a year. Nobody knows the names of these movies. These are all the highlights of the obscure film category. But in the 90s, it was different, and he was getting notable supporting roles, sometimes played leading roles in expensive projects. Today, I would like to recall the career of such a curious actor. The start of his career with Tom Sizemore was swift. He had only just managed to get into the film Born on the 4th of July directed by Oliver Stone, where he played an inconspicuous role, as in his next movie, where he was to have the same small part. He suddenly moved to a supporting role. He was helped by Sylvester Stallone, who liked the funny actor. Since the film's script was written during filming, there was no problem. Just Sylvester ordered to write a script where Sizemore's hero will sometimes enter the frame. At the box office, lockup failed. But the actor was still noticed and began to offer the role of a second, third plan. That's how he got into Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man, Passenger 57, True Romance, and Striking Distance. With each new film, his recognition grew, and his roles became more significant. He was seen by more directors. In 1994 he worked again with Oliver Stone, this time in a much more impressive role. It was Natural Born Killers, the audience received the movie well, and it won a few awards at various film festivals. This got Tom into Heat directed by Michael Munn. Here Tom was helped by an acquaintance with Robert De Niro. They starred together in Guilty by Suspicion. And even though Sizemore had a part in the fifth act, Robert remembered Tom. And later, Michael Munn asked De Niro for advice on Tom's involvement in the film, and Robert was in favor. De Niro would later call Sizemore into his witness to the mob production project, where Tom will already have one of the leading roles. In the mid-90s, Tom Sizemore began to show interest in various illegal drugs, quickly becoming known all around. Although the actor claimed it was an accident, he immediately gave up. According to rumors, the actor was even kicked out for a few days from Natural Born Killers filming. In 1996, the first high-budget movie happened in which he got the lead role. The only problem was that Peter Himes was making this film. In those years, Himes managed to direct the highest-grossing Van Damme movie, Time Cop. After that sudden death performed mediocre at the box office. But you can't call it a failure. So there was still hope for the director and he was invited to a $40 million project called The Relic. The film suffered a lot because of Harrison Ford's rejection. The shooting had already been prepared, and the actor for the leading role was needed tomorrow. This is where Tom Sizemore, who was recognizable, and his royalties declined because of rumors of drug addiction. The latter played a crucial role. After Ford left, the financing was cut from 60 to 40 million, and it was necessary to save on everything. The studio wrote it off when the movie was shot and shown to a test audience. The relic was considered a guaranteed failure. The numbers were predicted to be as paltry as $10 million. So they moved its 1996 premiere to January 1997. Surprisingly the film did not flop as expected. In those years, many people wrote that maybe the studio did not release the movie in January. It would have earned something at the box office. In the end, the release grossed $52 million on a budget of $40 million. It was an upsetting blow to Sizemore. He said he only signed on for the film because he had the lead role. He wanted to feel what it was like to be the lead actor. But the failure didn't have time to hurt him. Because even before the premieres, Steven Spielberg came out to him with an offer to play one of the roles in Saving Private Ryan. Knowing the stories of illegal substances, Spielberg set a condition. The actor had to submit to tests at the end of each day of filming. The director promised in case of at least one positive result. Throw Tom out of the movie and reshut all of his scenes with another actor, even if it happens on the last day of filming. It is claimed that absolutely all Tom's tests were clean. It was the pinnacle of Tom's career. The film won two Golden Globes and five Oscars. The picture, with a budget of 70 million at the box office, collected 481 million. Sergeant Howard's role received Sizemore as the brightest work of his career, and Tom Hanks even wrote him a commemorative postcard, which noted how inspiring it was to work with him. This role boosted the actor's career again. 
He even received it $2 million for his role in Red Planet. This is the same movie on the set of which Kilmer and Sizemore fought daily. After the failure of Red Planet, Kilmer's career began to wane. And Sizemore was able to star in several war films, and even starred in one movie with an Akito legend. It was one of Steven Seagal's first blockbusters to be released immediately on video. In 2004, he appeared in Dreamcatcher and Paper at Sea, and it seemed that he would continue to star in supporting third roles. But in 2005, his car was stopped by the police. Not only was Sizemore in a state of inadequacy, but they found so many illegal substances in his car that he could face a real-life sentence. But he received a suspended sentence with probation. That same year, the actor was caught cheating the experts who ensured he did not eat drugs. He again avoided jail time, but his probation was extended for another three years. In 2007, he was caught with the drugs again. And this time, he went to prison for almost a year. There was no career to speak of. In 2009, he was released and again caught driving in an inadequate state. In those years, he had no money at all. And one day, Tom even asked Jack Nicholson for a loan of 10 million. To which he heard a terse, no. After that, Tom had to deal with the problem of accommodation. And he lived in a squat in Silmar, in the woods, without water or electricity. But he was pretty handy, so he ran electricity from a telephone pole and rerouted water. Of course, after endless rehabs and rest and being left homeless, the actor decided to take any job. And the actor started acting in dozens of films of dubious quality. Sizemore was thought to have finally quit. There was talk that Sylvester Stallone got a couple more solid roles. But once things got going, accusations of domestic violence and harassment poured in. And yet, in recent years, the actor has often been glimpsed in films in starring roles with other B-movie buffs. However, Tom has done just as well as possible with the TV series. He was able to star in Twin Peaks by David Lynch, Shooter, and Mark Felt with Liam Neeson. Various directors are experimenting and giving Sizemore roles reminiscent of his former significant role. Tom Sizemore is the actor whose career did not pan out, not because he was unlucky with roles or because his agent chose the wrong parts. On the contrary, such famous directors as Michael Mann, Steven Spielberg, Ridley Scott gave a lot to an actor's career, entering him into their expensive projects for significant roles. There are 15 Tom Sizemore movies due out in 2022. That's more than one movie a month. That's quite a load for an actor who is 60 years old and has obvious health problems due to his addiction. So let's wish Tom well.